Good morning, everyone. Welcome to a beautiful and brand new day. Welcome to the winter solstice here in the northern hemisphere. And uh, if you are enjoying the summer solstice in the southern hemisphere, welcome to solstice. It's a spectacular time of the year. And here at the Mystic's Heart, and the Mystics Heart Publishing and the Temple Within, we are delighted to let you know that the magical mystic angels of light have been birthed into physical reality. In other words, into a beautiful deck of 36 empowerment and oracle cards. Uh, David Fix, if you happen to be listening, thank you for your artistry and... Thank you to the Angelics for inspiring the artist known as David Fix. For those of you that are out there and listening, the chat room is open. <clears throat> Come on in. I'd love to have you here in the chat room. And uh, if you just happen to be listening wherever you happen to be, that's perfectly fine too. This morning we're going to do messages from the magical mystic angels. Good morning, Holly Hagen. And first I wanted to talk about the magical mystic angels <clears throat> and the mystic angels. The mystic angels came about, oh my good, goodness, it's hard to believe, almost 14 years ago. And we know that in esoteric teachings or spiritual teachings of any sort, there are layers of knowledge and Layers upon layers upon layers upon layers within those layers of knowledge. About four years ago, David Fix and I embarked on a project to take the mystic angels to the next level or the deeper level, the magical level of information, of study. And it has taken us about four years to complete this deck. In the meantime, the book, A Book of Enchantments with the Mystic Angels of Light, was published, and the digital version of these cards was published, and I know that many of you have those. They are downloaded onto your Apple device, and you enjoy the motion and the movement of the magical mystic angels. And it took a little while longer to get the physical cards to become a reality, because there's a whole lot of work that goes into that. And uh, while I'm beginning the show, I'd like to give a great big thank you to the folks out at Granville Printing for the spectacular job that they have done with all of our decks in the Empowerment series. I believe that we have one more deck to go, and that is <clears throat> the Saints, the Mystical Saints. I'm really looking forward to that, but that's in the future. Anyway, this morning, I invite each and every one of you to take a great big deep breath and bring yourself into the space of your body and take a moment to <clears throat> acknowledge your body. And to give thanks for your body, everything that it does for you each and every day of your life, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. <clears throat> Take a moment to breathe into that indwelling where the most ancient of all of our ancestors lives or the presence of the creator, who is our oldest ancestor, our most ancient ancestor. And our most ancient ancestor dwells within all living things, as we know, including us. Take a breath into that space and exhale. And take notice of how that presence of creator within you feels in your body.
And maybe you'd like to take a moment to invite the presence of your ancestors, your elevated and illuminated ancestors, to join. And as we're breathing and relaxing, I'm going to read to you from page 133 uh, from a book of enchantments with the mystic angels of light, the incantation to the spirit of love. One love, self-love, fill me with your peace. Help me to gently release all that is unloving. From my life. Eternal light, Christed light, take from me all that is hateful and harmful to my life. Beloved Chamuel, Archangel of Love. Thank you for your luminous presence in my life. Walk with me. Light of love, spirit of love, sacred heart and mind of love, please draw near me and fill me. And with your next inhalation, love now fills me, walks with me, and moves through me. I am love, and I am loved. And so it is, and so it is. Ashe, amen. The spirit of love, the return of the sun, of the light, here in the Northern Hemisphere. For the next many days, we celebrate solstice. And on the 25th of this month, the return one minute longer of the sun here in the Northern Hemisphere, the return of the sun. Happy Hanukkah, Merry Yule, Happy Kwanzaa, Merry Christmas to everyone. Holly, I am going to begin with you. Come on in, everybody, into the chat room if you would like to have a card drawn for yourself. I'm going to begin with Holly and her mama. Okay, from the magical Mystic Angels Empowerment deck, Holly, I have drawn the Archangel Hamaliel, the Divine Chemist. And the keynote of Hamaliel is the word logic. Holly, if chaos is ruling your house of order, disrupting your peace of mind, cutting into your business or personal relationships, the Archangel Hamaliel will help you to set a logical course of action in order to create an organized state of tranquility, stability, and a balanced flow of abundance in your life. Create a sacred space and consciously breathe into every portion of your body. Feel how your deep inhalations and thorough exhalations bring about a sense of overall wellness. Invite the Archangel Hamaliel to assist you in gently removing the chaos in your life and replace it with joyful balance and peaceful order. Each day, thank the mystic angels of light for the loving support that you are receiving in order to attain your goal. The magical correspondences, the natural magical correspondences of the Archangel Hamaliel, some of them are Cyprus, Lavender, Virgo, August, Peridot, Mercury, Golden Brown, Russet Red, and Bright Yellow. 
Hamaliel, Hamaliel is also known as the ruler of the order of virtues and the patron of chemists. Order, logic, and results <laughs> are the keynotes of the archangel Hamaliel. Love that. Good morning, Laura. Hey, Ginny. Good to have you in the chat room. If you would like to order a deck of these cards, uh, the first run is nearly sold out. I'm looking at what remains here in my office. Uh, please feel free to go to denisefrancisco.com. Click on the Temple Within link and you will see where you can order books and cards and all those good sorts of things. The magic of the mystic angels, that word magic, it applies to so many things, natural magic, high ceremonial magic. What is magic? Magic can be as simple as the power of our own spoken and written words. Magic is a movement in the physical that also moves the non-physical world to produce a result. It's alchemy. It is working with. It's creating. Some people get tripped up on the word magic and maybe they immediately think of Aleister Crowley and Wicca and those sorts of things. And that's fine. If that is your path, that is your path. But magic is so basic and elemental. Some people live a magical life. It's because they're always co-creating with spirit. It doesn't mean that rotten things don't happen. But when we're consciously awake and aware of the power of our spoken word, of our written word, of what we do in our day-to-day, -day, we're always co-creating with the, with the unseen world. And the unseen world is very, very real. As someone who has spent 60 years now uh, walking very clearly with the unseen world, according to Catholic canon anyway. Thank you, Charmaine, if you happen to be listening. Charmaine is my spiritual director at the Dominican Center. Um, I am a seer. I am a sensitive. And they have, we have always existed and we will always exist. Some of us have a proclivity to be able to sense the unseen realms just as much as we sense the seen realm. Some people call that magic. Right? Magic is all about co-creating. And people can get caught up in, but what about dark magic? What about light magic? Each and every one of us makes a choice every day of our lives, whether we're going to walk a darkened path or a path of light. That is a choice that all of us make. No matter what our career path happens to be, or our religion or spiritual path of choice happens to be. I like to walk in the light myself. Not that the shadow doesn't visit me. That happens to each and every one of us. Hey, Angie, did you receive your deck? Fantastic. I'm so happy. <clears throat> All right. This one is for Mary Ann. Mary Ann. Oh, I love this. One of the things that I also created when I created this next level of teachings with the Mystic Angel, something's changed. Uh, for instance, the Phoenix card is now the Phoenixes. The Phoenixes. And the Phoenixes, actually, those teachings go into the Old Testament. <clears throat> Marianne, this one is for you. The Phoenixes represent the resurrection, harmonizing heaven and earth. Marianne, the time has come to lovingly let go of what no longer nourishes your body your mind, emotion, spirit, and soul, and warmly welcome that which brings joy, 
health, harmony, peace, and wellness to your life. Shine your light. It is time to fully shine your light, unencumbered by the things that weigh us down. Yes, Mary Ellen, I am sorry. I don't know why I said Mary Ann. Mary Ellen. Here is the song of the phoenixes, which comes from the book of Enoch. Mary Ellen. This is perfect for today, here as we celebrate solstice. The Song of the Phoenixes from the Book of Enoch. The light giver is coming to give radiance to the whole world. And the morning watch appears, which is the sun's rays. And the sun comes out over the face of the earth and retrieves his radiance to give light to all the face of the earth. The Book of Enoch. What does that mean? The morning rays, those first rays of the sun, are angels. They are angelic beings. They are known as the angels of the rising sun, the phoenixes. Every evening they disappear, and every morning they reappear to shine all across this magnificent grandmother earth, to warm us, to remind us each and every day is a new day. Get up, rise, and shine. Those words are often also associated with the first priest king of Atlantis, Toth, Hermes, Trismegistus, in some esoteric teachings. So Mary Ellen, that is for you. And I'm guessing perhaps there is a Mary Ann that is waiting to get into the chat room. And Mary Ann, if you are out there, please do come in. We'd love to have you. Laura Smith. This one is for you, Laura. Good morning, my friend. Oh, the Archangel Saint Michael, Mikael, the Prince of Light, the ruler of the fourth heaven. The depths to which we are able to descend correspond to the heights that we are able to ascend. I love that teaching. That is also the teaching of the Merkaba, of the Great Pyramid at Giza the lower and the upper chambers of the Great Pyramid. Walking the path of the mystic requires balance and integrity. In the physical and non-physical worlds around and within us, banishing negativity in order to expose and expand the brilliance of light often takes great courage and discipline. So, too, setting healthy and stable boundaries is rarely easy, and maintaining those borders can be harder still. Laura, St. Michael, the beloved archangel of the celestial spheres, lovingly invites you to contemplate that which may be out of balance in your life, in your spiritual practice, and or in your work. It is time to restore equilibrium. Asking the beloved St. Michael to assist you in this endeavor will bring positive changes in gentle, measured ways. Some of the natural correspondences that relate to the Archangel St. Michael are gold, brass, Sunday, as in the day of the week, the sun, amber, tiger's eye, Hibiscus, butterfly, wolf, sparrow, hawk, frankincense, the list goes on and on. Just as, you know, I grew up in a very Catholic household, um, and I'm not complaining about that. I'm grateful for, for that. Many people are not grateful for the religious upbringing. I'm very grateful that I was brought up in a Catholic household. The reason for that is because it's very natural for me to speak about the archangels and the angels and the saints 
and the alchemy of working with the saints and the angels and the goddesses. Uh, very natural for me. And one thing that I always was intrigued by growing up was watching the priest change the color of his robes for every, sometimes for the feast days, the celebrations of a particular saint, or for the holy days. And I noticed that the colors changed, and I noticed that sometimes the banners in the church changed, the sayings changed, the candles changed. So I learned at a very young age that there are correspondences that correlate to particular angels or seasons or holy celebrations. And as I grew and I studied, I learned that this is true in many uh, religious and spiritual practices and pagan practices as well. In fact, I, I grew up being called a pagan <laughs> by many for, for being Catholic, right? But I was also raised in a household uh, that was a military household, very strict, and we were taught to respect everybody's walk, everybody's spiritual or non-spiritual or pagan pathway. We were simply taught that that's, that's how we behaved. So the Archangel St. Michael is here for you, Priestess, and it's about having a look-see, restoring equilibrium. And it is a reminder that sometimes we are led to descend into some really troubling times in our lives. And equal to that measure is the ability then for us to ascend into the higher wisdom teachings. It's amazing to me that the wisest people in my mind are the people who have walked through the most shadowy spaces, right? The darkest and hardest times. Ginny, this one is for you, my dear friend. Let us just pull a card. I was also taught <clears throat> at a very young age about Lectio Divina. And what does that mean, right? <laughs> there are terms for it, but let's just say I was also taught at a very young age that you could open up the King James Version of the Bible, and just let it open naturally and read whatever it was that was on the page that you opened to, to contemplate on that. So divination is not something, it's not called divination when you're going to catechism, of course, but there it was. Okay. This one is for you. Spirit says, just keep shuffling for her. Oh, goodness. All right. The Archangel Eratron. Oh, one of my favorites. The Archangel Eratron is known as the very first angel. The divine magician. So the first angel of the, the magi. Ginny. In many ancient texts and teachings, Eratron is named as the very first angel, the original divine messenger, created to bridge the seen and the unseen worlds. A mighty archangel, Eratron governs the practices of natural magic, chemistry, hermeticism, herbology, alchemy, astronomy, and astrology. Wise practitioners of the ancient ways and the old religions have always known that their ancestors and ancestral DNA play a pivotal role in their proclivity and proficiency in the esoteric arts. Perhaps it is time to learn more about your ancestors, their gifts, their talents, their language, their ancient songs, cultural and spiritual wisdom. 
invite the Archangel Eratron to lovingly assist you, your practice, and to guide and protect and keep you balanced upon your path. Some of the correspondences that relate to the Archangel Eratron are frankincense and myrrh, rose, the crown chakra, the third eye, and quartz crystal. I love that. The divine magician, the first angel. He's new to the deck. Or she, he, she. Angels are neither he or she. They are both. The Archangel Eratron. Angie. Hey, Janet. Oh, good, Victoria. You got your first deck. Your other deck went out yesterday. Angie, this one is for you. And Angie, I hope that you enjoy the deck. <laughs> oh, the Archangel Azrael, also known as the Mag Magus or Magus. So many ways to pronounce words. Hereditary High Priest and Priestess. Angie, your soul is in need of loving nourishment, quiet conversation, and reflection. Azrael, one of the greatest light emissaries in all of the angelic realms, the divine being who lovingly separates the soul from the physical body at the time of our earthly passing reminds you of the importance of taking the time to listen, to feel, to see, to smell, to taste what is not physically present, but what is wholly alive within you and in the unseen worlds around you. To the one who sees, feels, and listens, much wisdom is revealed in the sacred space and time that is spent with our angelic guides and spiritual allies each day. Angie, on this magnificent day of celebration, the solstice, you are being asked to create a sacred space for conscious breathing and conversation with spirit and soul. What needs to be released in order for what is new to be born? What do your guides, angels, allies, and totems and spirit wish to share with you at this time? Take time to listen, to feel, to know, to see. I love this. Uh, Azrael is known as the angel of death. He is the angel. It is the angel of Scorpio. The angel of death, rebirth, and ascension. Azrael, one of my faves as a Scorpio. Janet Smith, my beautiful Scottish friend over there in the UK. I'm so glad that you could join us today. I know it's an odd time there in the UK, mid-afternoon or late afternoon, but it's good to have you. Blessings of the solstice to you. This one is for you. The Archangel Saint Israfel, the Archangel of Music, also known as the Burning One. Some say perhaps it was Israfel who was in the story of the burning bush with Moses. Some, not all. Right? There are so many stories and mythologies and it's part of the of the path of being a mystic is really diving into the mysteries and the mythologies and all of that good sort of thing. Janet, Saint Israfel, the archangel of music, appears to us when it is time to create, enjoy, or move to music. This heavenly herald also asks us to consider consider inner healing work, utilizing sound and vibration. This may be for our own healing or learning harmonic healing techniques to assist others. You are being encouraged to create a sacred space for yourself and perhaps for others as well. 
Invite the loving presence of Israfel to permeate the room as you listen to soul-nourishing music or as you make your own. Allow the flow of the music to move through you, within you, and around you. Let it inspire, heal, and elevate you. I love this. Some of the correspondences to the Archangel Saint Israfel are turquoise, quartz, the color royal blue, and sandalwood. Known as the patron angel of music from the celestial spheres. The key words for Israfel are sing, chant, music, and awaken. So on this solstice, get out there and move your body. Take that beautiful granddaughter of yours and sing, hum, dance. Get in the rhythm of life, life all around us, right? As above, so below. As the stars and the planets are aligned, so too are we. NASA has done studies with that, how we are influenced by planetary and celestial um, formations, as you all know. Hey, Lily. Victoria. Way over there in San Diego. Good to have you with us. For those of you that are Patreon members, you know that you get a 10% discount on all of my classes and the deck of cards as well. Everyone, if you go to schoolofsacredstudies.com, schoolofsacredstudies.com, you can see some of the classes that are forming. And in fact, I am going to be teaching a monthly course, only 45 minutes long, so you don't have to be on a Zoom meeting forever. I know it can be very uh, overwhelming to be looking at a screen. And in honoring that, the class is set up to go a max of 45 minutes. But each and every month for the next 12 months, beginning in January, we will be exploring more fully each month three of the magical mystic angels. So we will be going into the angelic language of the sigils, uh, the correspondences, the messages, the origins, all of those wonderful sorts of things. Uh, if you are not able to be live with me via Zoom, everyone who registers for the course will receive a link to the archive of the class that you can keep and you can enjoy at your leisure, but so that we can really get into the nuts and bolts of the teachings of these cards. It's great to have a deck of oracle cards or inspirational cards or tarot cards, whatever that practices for you. But with, this, with, with the empowerment cards, the reason that we call them empowerment cards, David and I, is because we want to empower you to fully utilize them. To not only that, but to understand them. To really see where they're coming from or where they came from. So please go ahead, check it out, schoolofsacredstudies.com. And if you are a Patreon member, you receive a discount on the course. It's only $10 a month, and it will be worth every single penny. That I can assure you. Okay, Victoria, Spirit says I can stop shuffling now, shuffling and talking. The angel Yehudia. Oh my gosh, this is one of my favorite pieces of artwork. The other thing that you'll notice with this new deck is that David Fix, the artist, uh, reworked aspects of the art for each of the 33 original cards and also the three additional uh, angels. And the sigils, what is a sigil? Sigil is a symbolic language. And the angelic symbol, symbols, sigils, those are unspoken languages that we see everywhere in many traditions. Those are now on the cards, and so the cards are empowered by both 
uh, the sigils. What is, the sigil is the name of the angel written in a symbolic language. It's that easy. It's that easy. And then there are symbols, spiritual symbols associated with each of the angels that are now on the front of each and every card. The deck, as you know, has been expanded to 36 cards. Yehudia, the divine leader, the caretaker of souls, says, to everything there is a season, a purpose, and a reason. <laughs> right? Very much Ecclesiastes. To everything there is a season. Who also sang that? The, the group, the birds. To everything, turn, turn, turn. There is a season. And congratulations on the season of retirement for you. In a lifetime spent in the health care uh, world. Thank you for your service in health care. And welcome to the next upon your journey. Transitioning from a job, relationship, mindset community or path of learning to another can be exciting and frightening all at the same time. Invite the angel Yehudia to gently assist you during the changes that flow, that the flow of life brings. Boy, this is a perfect card for you. If someone you love is in the process of transitioning from the physical world to the world of spirit, Yehudia will also help to deliver them lovingly and carefully home. So for those of you that work in hospice, or for those of you that are listening that maybe have a beloved in hospice, the angel Yehudia can help with the gently, uh, with gently assisting in that process of shedding the physical body and going back to the spiritual makeup of things. Some of the correspondences, Victoria, that relate to Yehudia are the Zohar, I keep a copy of the Zohar uh, in my bedroom and a co copy of the Zohar, which is, of course, ancient Hebrew texts. Um, it's a very magical text. And also in my library downstairs where I uh, do counseling sessions with my clients. The Zohar, the month of September, Sapphire, Virgo, Sunflower, Marigold, Mercury, the Great Pyramid at Giza all correspond to the teaching of Yehudia, which is let go, accept, and soar. It's one of my favorite uh, artistic renditions in the entire deck of 36 is Yehudia. Yeah. Lily, Ginny, <laughs> you're very welcome. Hey, Kelly. Hey, Katie. Virginia. Well, hello. Gee, you know, I was looking. It has been since March of last year since I last did one of these uh, gatherings. Because I will tell you, David and I have been working our butts off in creating not only the book of enchantments that goes with this deck, uh, and it's been out for a bit of time, but then working on creating this deck together. We have been working so diligently. So welcome back, everyone, and welcome to the next level of teachings and the next depth, I should say, not level, the next depth. Oh, goodness. Laura is saying you've... Thank you so much, Dana. I have actually just recently started to call on Archangel St. Michael much more. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Lily, Lily, this one is for you. It's the Archangel Chamuel. Chamuel. Sons and daughters of light. Celestial lifeblood. Those are keynote words with Chamuel. Also a perfect card for this day, solstice here, uh, winter solstice here in the Northern Hemisphere. Our darkest hour often reveals the greatest light. Isn't that true? 
The moment of our greatest weakness often reveals our capacity for enormous strength. The Archangel Chamuel gently assists us in regaining our self-confidence, inner strength and courage, even in the harshest of times. Through the process of grief or the dark night of the soul, the divine love of Chamuel is steadfast. Create a sacred space for yourself, Lily, today, tonight, for yourself, for conscious breathing and quiet contemplation, and invite the Archangel Chamuel to be present. In the silence of your heart and mind, share your burdens with this angel of divine love and light, and thank Chamuel for gently assisting you through the process of regaining your sense of strength and inner peace. Some of the correspondences, natural correspondences with Chamuel, are green fluorite, pale green, lavender, and rose. So it can be the color rose, it can be rose oil, rose petals, right? All of those wonderful correspondences also known as the patron angel of peace and calmness. Some of some more of the keywords associated with Chamuel, everyone, are strength, peacefulness, and light. So how might you use these magical mystic angel cards? Everyone knows that I, and this is part of my upbringing, it's also, as I've discovered, part of my ancestry, my lineage, I recently uh, received the paperwork from my biological mother from my birth, right? And so these are papers that I have been working toward getting for what seems like an eternity. Um, I was raised in an adoptive family that was very Catholic, um, in a military family. You know that my biological father, as I have learned, uh, was also a military man, and I didn't know much about my biological mother. Really, until recently, a couple of months ago, finally, all of the paperwork that I filled out and the petitions and registries that I had to become part of bore fruit, and the fruit was uh, the information surrounding my birth and my mother's, my birth mother's family. And in the paperwork that was actually done by my biological mother, I discovered that I come from a family that is, of course, from the Netherlands, from Holland and <laughs> Amsterdam. My mother's parents came from Belgium, Amsterdam, Holland, right? Uh, so she was first generation. I'm second generation on that side of family from the Netherlands, but also very Catholic. And I wasn't surprised by that. My mother was baptized in Brooklyn uh, before moving to Georgia uh, at St. Michael's uh, Cathedral. And so it's very, and it's a long line of Catholicism. And so having in my home, lots of candles and altars and a collection of rosaries that my grandson recently discovered. Um, for me, in working with these cards, and because they do have symbolism and sigils and their names written in the ancient angelic language, placing one of these next to a lit candle can be a ceremony in and of itself. You can elaborate elaborate by adding more of the correspondences around the candle and the card. You see what I'm saying? There's an energy to each and every one of these cards. And in my practice, as has been my practice in this lifetime, and I believe in many lifetimes, the use of candles and symbol symbolism. We Catholics are very steeped in symbolism whether it's the rosary or the statues or the candles, the side altars, the paintings, the uh, stained glass windows, all of those are symbols. And symbols are potent. They have meaning. 
And the more meaning that you give those symbols, uh, the more you reflect upon that consciously or subconsciously, you're creating energies. These are some of the things we're going to talk about in the 12-month class series as well. So Lily, it's Chanuel for you. It's a long-winded way of welcoming everyone back and talking about some of those things. Katie. Hey, Kimberly. Thank you for your order. Your order will go out today, my friend, for the cards. Katie. This one's for you, love. All right, the Archangel Asariel. <laughs> I love this. I'm having so much fun. I hope you all are too. Asariel is known as the Angel of Discernment. And discernment is a good thing to have. Discernment and healthy skepticism are wonderful gifts, everyone. Aren't they having a healthy gift of discernment and skepticism? If we are in need of additional discernment, we just can't see the forest through the trees, or we're clouded with emotion, or clouded with relationship, and we need some help with that. Um, the Archangel Asariel is here to help. Katie, discernment is the key to clarity and balance in all aspects of our spiritual, physical, mental, and emotional life as well as our relationships in the seen and the unseen worlds. The Archangel Asariel helps us to gain clarity by dissolving the specters of illusion, rumor, chaos, clouded emotions, and the bonds of ignorance and negativity. Sometimes we just can't see because we can feel so negative or there's negativity around us. Woof! Right? Asariel helps to uncover the truth of the matter for, the, for those who are seeking it. Boy, and just reading this again, ignorance and negativity. Sometimes we need to get to that golden nugget, and maybe it's somebody else's negativity, or maybe it's our own, right? Because we can all get caught up in those things. Some of the natural correspondences are emerald, Silver, willow, frankincense, right? So it's all about discernment, Katie, getting clarity. Asariel helps all of us to gain clarity. Asariel is the angel that we always have on the box of the mystic angels and the magical mystic angels. So discernment, 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 everybody. Use your heart, but don't forget to take your brain. Virginia, this one is for you. Da, da, da. Informed spirituality is always a good thing. <laughs> Not just going blindly. Oh, goodness. <laughs> but we've all done it, haven't we? Oh, my goodness. We have all done it. All right. Okay, here we are. Oh, Virginia. The Thunder Being. Now, maybe here's a little ditty that you didn't know, but if you read, well, I'll just read the card, and then we'll get to the core of that old ditty that maybe we didn't know. The Thunder Being, representing, of course, thunder and lightning, and transfiguration, Virginia. To the ancient Essenes, the presence of thunder represented metamorphosis, an opportunity for great change. Thunder and lightning also represented the connection and pathway of communications between the heavens and Grandmother Earth. 
to many indigenous healers and holy persons around the earth, the same teachings still hold true. The all-seeing eye of the Thunderer watches us as we walk our earthly journey. Are we staying the course of our soul's path, doing our spiritual work with integrity? Are we ready for the next level of initiation, or do we need to be brought back to the basics of learning? All of these questions and their truthful answers are the business of the Thunder Being. Summon the presence of the Thunder Being when you are looking to gently remove decaying thoughts, emotions, traumas, patterns, and belief systems from your life. Boy, that's a big one, isn't it? The thunderers, there are teachings uh, in the Old Testament. It's called the thunder. Years ago, I was giving a lecture at a college and I talked about being a thunder dreamer. And I am a thunder dreamer. And what does that mean? In the Native American sense of a thunder dreamer, it means that I have the ability to see, to feel, to perceive beyond the physical reality. Just like thunder and lightning, right? There's a connection between heaven and earth with thunder and lightning. Boom, all of a sudden they connect. That is a thunder dreamer. A thunder dreamer also to the ancient Essenes is the exact same thing. Well, when I was giving the lecture, my friend Dale Allen Hoffman, who is an Aramaic mystic, Dale uh, lives in the Carolinas in Asheville. He was also giving a lecture at the college and he speaks the Aramaic language. Well, he started to cry as I was talking about the thunder, the thunder, the thunderers, thunder beings, and thunder dreamer. And afterwards, he walked up and hugged me and he said, you are the only, ever pers- the only other person who has ever talked about the thunder beings, the thunder, the lightning, also as it pertains to Hebrew teachings, ancient Essene teachings, etc., etc., So maybe you didn't know that there was a correlation, but there is. There are so many teachings that correlate when we use discernment, when we take the deep dive and not just doing a Google search, everybody, but cracking open a book, an ancient text. Google doesn't teach you everything, right? So there... Sometimes we know we have old thought patterns that need to be let go of, and that's not easy. Call upon the thunder for a gentle shedding. I I always like to use gentle and with ease, and I am uh, thanking spirit for help. Just saying, please thank you for gentle learning and ease. <laughs> Kimberly Wink, this one is for you. It is the Archangel Saint Uriel, the regent of the sun, immortal light. Some situations require the presence of celestial luminous light. High ceremony, healing, banishment, boundary setting, truth seeking, and discernment require the integrity of of the Archangel St. Uriel's radiant light. Remember to invite this magnificent angel to be present with you each day. In this way, at each moment, you are cloaked in the divine presence of the light of love. And I love this mantra or petition. Uriel, Splendid archangel of holy, sacred light, please come. Surround me with your protective, healing radiance. Guard me against all that is harmful. Exile to the light all that is evil. Permeate the space and fill me with your light and the love of creator. Thank you. So be it. And so it is. 
and for our practitioners of the African religions, I would add Ashe. Some of the correspondences with the Archangel Saint Uriel are, are amber, jasmine, the sun, of course, Saturday. Known as the patron saint of arts and sciences, the angel of discernment as well. Some of the key words pertaining to Uriel are light unto the darkness, discernment, and illumination. Yay, 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 yay. Kelly, this one is for you. And if everyone could go scroll up to the top of the chat room page and click on that little heart right there below the magic of winter solstice and the mystic's heart, that would be great. What that does is it lets those of the streamers that stream this podcast all over Grandmother Earth know that you are liking uh, what I am presenting. We are now streaming this podcast in the Netherlands. Thank you to our friends in the Netherlands. And all across the UK, thank you to all of our friends in the UK and in Ireland. Kelly, this one is for you. The Archangel Cassiel. Oh, I love this one. I love them all, you can tell. Cassiel relates to the father of time the mother of time, the divine hermit and hermitess. Isn't that perfect for winter solstice when we all go within? Yeah. Being in time rather than rushing to be on time or scurrying to make time is the key here. The ancients and your ancient self is calling you to pause, consciously breathe, observe, assess, contemplate, appreciate, and come into the flow of time and the divine timing of your soul's earthly journey. It is time to see your life and the happenings in and around your life, Kelly, with the eyes of a wise elder soul. Oh, do I like that for you. Some of the correspondences of the Archangel Cassiel are the color black, the color white, garnet, onyx, nepsis. We're going into ancient Egyptian teachings. The oak, the evergreen, the raven, the earthworm, Raven, I said that earlier, and myrrh amongst many others. The ruler of the seventh heaven, some of the key words that pertain to Cassiel are pause, rest, examine, and elder. Lovely, lovely, lovely. You are all very welcome. And again, if you have a copy of my book, A Book of Enchantments with the Mystic Angels of Light, working with these book, with these cards, all of the cards in their entirety are in the book, but so also are more teachings, prayers, incantations. Uh, in the back of the Book of Enchantments, uh, you also have layouts for the cards. All right, there's also a space to journal. So really, the book and the cards are a resource for ritual and ceremony with the angels, the mystic angels of light, creating some magic. We all could use some magic in our lives, but doing it with intention and integrity is the key, knowing what we are doing and who we are doing it with in the unseen worlds is always a great good thing. If there's anyone else in the chat that would like me to pull a card, I am so happy to do that. Welcome to the return of the sun this year here on Grandmother. Uh, December 21st or 25th, excuse me, is when we begin to experience one minute more 
of the sun's light. And again, whatever tradition you celebrate the return of the sun in its many forms, blessings of the holy days to each and every one of you. Blessings upon your holiness. You are holy beings, divine beings. The solstice is a time when spirit is so close, the spirit of all things. It is a, a time to reflect upon the past nine months of your life and all of the lessons, the knowledge you have gained from those lessons and the wisdom that is now ready to be born from all of the experiences, teachings, lessons, and knowledge that you have gained in the past nine months. With that, everyone, thank you for joining me here on The Mystic's Heart. Thank you for supporting The Mystic's Heart, the School of Sacred Studies, the Temple Within, and thank you for your light upon Grandmother Earth. Blessings be, everyone.